The fact that the star systems are always going to be different, you can choose an A or a B side, which changes the amount of nebulas and different things that you'll find on the board and how you're going to move. The wormholes that let you not have to just go through the middle of the map to get to your opponents, but can cross through is really cool. And the fact that choosing to go to war can block certain things from happening. If somebody's trying to wormhole directly to you and you think they're gonna start combat with you, you can declare at war, block that wormhole and stop them from getting to you. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Galactic Era by CJ Games, made by Channing Jones. The game plays two to six players with a solo variant, takes roughly about 180 minutes, that sounds about right, depending on the number of players, and the ages are 14 and up, more complex style. 4x game you'll be exploring and exploiting and expanding and exterminating your way through as star people and you will have your certain alignments are you going to try and spread peace across the galaxy or will you be selfish and be warlike and attempt to go out and conquer people there's going to be a wide variety of different options and tech trees that you can get yourself into you will be setting up secret fleets that are going to have certain bonuses as well as the ability to warp across worlds work together or work against each other in order to earn destiny points and after eight rounds of play somebody will become victorious and reign supreme in the galaxy interested in galactic era let's go ahead and take it down below i'll show you what you get in the game basic idea of how to play and then we'll come up and discuss what i think about it Welcome to the game Galactic Era, and this here, this big setup you see here, is set up for three players or two players with a dummy player, which that basically means that you're going to be setting up this board here that plays two to three players, and you're going to pick the board that's closest to you. I have blue set up for over here, red as the dummy player over there, and then green as another player over in the far corner there. This game does play the solo variant as well, but we're just gonna be talking about this one and the higher player counts. Everybody is going to get to choose a star person or star people, and there is a bunch of different races to choose from, all from the various uh, different like scientific, you know, extraterrestrial type websites and the spiritual things, and you can go ahead and select them. There's going to be options as to you can fight them as a warlike type of people, or they're going to be a more peaceful. And the greys are probably thing an alien race that most people are going to be very well aware of. After you've gone ahead and selected yours, then make sure everybody does it at the same time and selects to either be warlike or not, then place it next to you. Everybody's going to get a tech tree, and you're going to see the colors based on this little outline here, so I'm blue, as well as one of these cards here. You're also going to start your tech trees all at one, which you'll be moving up most likely before the game begins, and I'll explain how that works. Take a population tracker right here and set it out along with all of these little guys here, these little population markers, and place them on top of every single number except for the number six. Don't place that there because that's going to be your star, your main star, your, your main home world, which you'll be placing down in the middle area on the board that is closest to you. In a two-player game, go ahead and take out the population markers for the fourth or third and fourth players, Oh yeah, fourth and fifth players, and set them next to each player. You'll be utilizing these to do bids before the movement takes place to utilize the extra character, the AI character, for instance. And then go ahead and give yourself all of these guys, these are your growth markers, as well as your tech tree upgrades and the ability to switch between going first and second and moving through the turn order. You're also going to give yourself dummy ships. Just go ahead and set them aside. They're gonna be in your color and they will be at zero, as well as your turn order. Just go ahead and randomly assign a turn order to every single player that is playing the game, as well as there's five fleets. All of them should be face down except for D. Everyone's going to see D. Peace markers, you'll actually distribute these out to each player so that they have them and everybody starts at peace with each other but that's going to change very quickly and an emergency reserve it's a one-time use if it fits the criteria you'll be able to 
basically protect your home world. It's a way of protecting yourself when situations get very dire. On this board here, go ahead and place one of these star markers on each of these areas. And in the book, it tells you what type of markers you're gonna be utilizing. You'll be shuffling them up and placing them down. I believe these ones here are 222 of the three different types, 222, 222. And then over here, it's gonna be 333. Along with, you're gonna have these bonus tokens here. These are gonna be like artifacts that you can go ahead and utilize. It'll give you some type of extra benefit by converging and having populuses over here in the main area of the board. Go ahead and note that you're going to be marking them along and placing them equally distant across, just as you see here. Place wormholes on each of the dots on the closest side here, and make sure they're of the same color. These are basically going to allow you to warp across the map so that you'll be able to not only go from here to here, but you can also go from here over to here. So it's a good way of getting quicker through the places you might want to be. Set your star colonies, and everybody's going to start with three of these ships here. Uh, along with this board over here. This is going to be your main round board. Set your pawn at round one. There's eight rounds in the game. Go ahead and choose a random storyboard. These long little things here. I've just gone ahead and selected one up here and put the rest underneath. You're just going to need to select one here though. And a galactic goal. These are bonus victory points at the end of the game. This one specifically says as you conquer and populate these areas here, you'll get to keep these. And whoever has the most of each category will score a bonus 10 points. And then put all of your victory point markers at zero on this board here. After you've gone ahead and done that, then you're going to go ahead and check your character board and your location that you start with, and it'll give you certain benefits. Like, for instance, the Dracos here, they're going to start with military level two, and they're also going to get three extra ships, which is why I have an extra three here. Uh, and then not only that, but they're also going to get a bonus here on genetics because that is the bonus that you get for the specific star system. So I went ahead and moved it up one. So now he's got two in genetics, two in military, an extra three ships. I do that for the rest of the other guys. As you can see, red starts with extra victory points and green's going to start with two extra stat upgrades. So each character has their own benefits, whether they're passive or whether they're active. And then you're pretty much ready to go. Set all your extra ships over here, as well as these extra cards that you're gonna be getting. Bonus victory points that if you go around the board, you'll be taking these, and you can go negative, so be careful there. As well as your fleet upgrade tokens, whether it be plus three victory points or the ability to times two the effects of your fleets, because these are all your fleets and they tell you what they do. All right, and then we're gonna move on to the rounds. And luckily enough, we have a ton of these little round markers. So this is round summaries, and they tell you exactly how to play the game. So basically it'll tell you you're gonna do movement and combat, and movement's gonna be based on propulsion, and you can go ahead and move along the board however you want. You can go ahead and also switch out your fleets when they're on star, switch out your ships when they're on stars to make into fleets. So if I wanted to, I can get rid of these three here, and I can turn them into a fleet. I can choose any of these. If it's a D, it's face up, otherwise it's face down. And I'm gonna go ahead and gather these guys here. These are neutral ones here. I can choose in any combination. I let people know whenever I make fleets and I place it in the area. And then I can go ahead and move them along. In this case, all of my guys can move three. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, and then I can, I move. After I move, if there's any spaces I'm occupying with combat, usually it's going to be somebody I'm at war with. And you can just go ahead and flip yourself at war whenever you need to be at war with these tokens here. So for instance, if Red had this and he wanted to go to war with me, he would flip this over and then we're at war and we'd fight each other. In general, though, these guys just don't go to war instantly. There are certain rules as to how that works. But when you are like the rogue AI, the green player, you can just simply go to war whenever you want. And you'll initiate combat. And combat's gonna be based on your military level. It's going to be based on how many ships you have in the area. And it's going to be based on your fleets. And you'll add up all those points. You'll add up your opponent's points and whoever has the most wins. And then you'll determine how many ships you want to defeat of theirs because there's a cost to how many defe defeating ships you do. And if you don't have a three to one ratio, you can lose out on quite a few ships even by winning. So it's kind of important as to how you want to attack. In addition, your opponents are going to retreat as well if you don't defeat all of them. And then you'll move on to the growth phase. And the growth phase is pretty simple. Basically, you're gonna get these little growth token counters and you'll be selecting two of them in general. And you're gonna go ahead and hide them, don't show them to anybody else, but you can do stuff like research your tech tree, change your alignment, populate a star, uh, create uh, more ships, as well as populate your already po uh, populated areas. And you can also go ahead and select one of these. Now there's two options. You can either select to increase a tech tree, provided you chose the tech tree option, or you could uh, increase or decrease your player turn count. Uh, these don't require anything. You can just simply do them. While these, in order to actually accomplish 
this objective, like getting this plus one, you have to actually use the research tool in addition. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could take this one here, I could take this one here, and this one here, and I'd flip them all over simultaneously with everybody else, and then you accomplish it in turn order. In this case, uh, I'm first, so I would go ahead and give myself bonus ships. I would get two ships for here. I would get uh, one ship if I had this guy here, three ships or five ships. So in this case, actually just two. And then I'm going to get one more bonus ship for every one of my ships occupying an asteroid space. And in this case, I would just get two and I'd place it on my home world. And then I can go ahead and upgrade myself as well. I'm going to upgrade my propulsion, pushing me up here, allowing me to get extra movement. Each of these tracks do different things. This one's going to let you populate more. This one's going to let you build more ships. The, this one, propulsion, is going to let you move more. And they all have unique additional passive and active benefits. Spirituality is going to be this like unique, interesting thing where you can kind of look across the map and see what different things are and see what people's fleets are and whatnot. And then military is just going to give you additional military might when you're fighting against other opponents. Uh, a couple other things, I guess, with the actions. And we'll try and be rather quick about this because there's a lot to talk about. But when you get a ship onto a location, if I would have chosen something like this here, I could then go ahead and I'm always able to check these whenever I walk onto them, but only when I'm on them or before moving off of them. And then I can look at my board here. And on my board here, it tells me how many ships I need, the target I'm at, and how many population I gain. So in this case, this is an empty space. If I chose this action, I could remove this. I could take one of my population and place it here. That will let me build more ships. It gives me more victory points at the end of the game. And it's also useful for populating areas on the board. And there's some other uses as well for populating. But this is also an interesting thing too, because you're gonna be utilizing this for this. Not always will these be needed. But depending on if you're the good guy or the bad guy will determine what you're looking for, what you're trying to fight, and what you're trying to gain. And of course, as a good guy, you won't be using any of the two-sided things, like this one here. This is a little two-sided one, or a little two, population two. You just simply won't be dealing with that because you're not aggressive, so you're not going to actually be trying to kill those guys. And you'll basically be going around the world trying to populate new stars and increasing their population. You'll be fighting your opponents. You're going to be trying to complete objectives, etc., etc. After you've gone and done the growth phase, choosing two of these and one of these, then you're going to move on to the trading phase. Trading is pretty simple. Basically, if you're in an occupied space with an ally, you can trade uh, tech, which is kind of interesting. You can, if I have a genetics two and you have a combat two and I have a combat one and you have a genetics one, we can actually trade where we both get a bonus from them. You never go down this track, you can only go up it. So trading is actually really interesting. And then after you do trading, the final aspect of the round is going to be scoring. And you'll look at this track here. It'll tell you in what era you're gonna score, what you're gonna scare, score. So okay, if you're uh, the good guys or the, the passive guys or peaceful guys, you'll score a point. And if you built ships this round, you'll score two points and you'll move yourself up on this track. And then this era over here, so after the third, on the third round all the way up to the uh, sixth round, it'll be if you're bad, if you are at war with people, if you colonize certain areas, and if you defeat opponent ships, you'll score more points. And then it'll go back to the good side. And these boards do change and are different as you go throughout the game. So each round is going to be a little different. But the idea remains the same. You're going to be moving, entertaining combat. You'll be doing your growth actions by selecting these, flipping them all up based on turn order. Then you'll be trading and then you'll check to see what you scored based on how you did throughout the entire round. There's a couple things to note. There's a lot of little, little things like these guys give you bonus ships. These ones cost two to go in, but they'll give you a bonus two when they leave. The Powerful, unique artifacts here will give you unique things, like when you colonize this area here, you're going to get three additional ships, and it's only available in the middle here. And uh, the dummy player, like I said before, at, before moving in every round, people will bid, and you'll lose victory points for what you bid. And the player that bid the most will actually get to control the dummy player and move him around the board and go at war with other people. You can't go at war with the dummy player yourself, but you can go at war with your opponent and mess them up. However, holding the dummy player for a longer period of time is going to A, cost you victory points, and then for the amount you have in addition to the first round, it can actually get exponentially more expensive. After eight rounds, you tally up all your destiny points all around the board and use these to track if you need to, as well as any other bonus victory conditions like these guys here, these ones here, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game Galactic Era. A lot to go through, I know. Let's come up and talk about it. So after hearing all that, I'm sure most of you are prepared to realize that this is a heavier 4X game with a lot of options. Now, the rounds are fairly simple as to how it works, moving, combat, growth, 
trading, and then scoring, and then you move on. But there is a lot of complexities in each of the rounds, and what you choose to do makes a huge difference, as well as a ton of replayability. There are a ton of the different aliens races, or star people, and they're all based on aliens said to believe to be existing or currently existing today. A bunch of different websites and sources and stuff, which I thought was pretty interesting. And so there's a whole plethora or plethora of different choices and you can choose to go ahead and be good or bad or rotate throughout the game and some are better at doing that than others. Uh, there's a couple things I didn't talk about that I think are really cool, these, these cards here. These are basically objective cards you can complete throughout the game, and if you do, you can choose either the A or the B side, and when you complete them, you're going to score bonus victory points, depending on what you choose, as well as some unique effect. You're going to get one at the start of the game, and then in the third era, you're going to be able to get another one, and if you don't like this one in the first era, on the second one, you can go ahead and discard this and choose a new one. When you're going through all the tracks, they're going to give you something unique and different, whether it be spirituality, which lets you kind of like go across the map and look at things you normally wouldn't be able to look at or combat military combat where you're going to get bonus victory points or the ability to uh times to an effect of a fleet some fleets will give you bonus attack others will let you escape easily and then another one is going to give you 50 percent uh, additional ships when you're fighting against a star there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. So for the most part, people who don't like complex style Forex games are not gonna find themselves interested in this. Uh, it's just got a ton, right? There's a huge amount of table space it takes up. When you're playing two players, you basically have to play with three players. And the extra player is a dummy player that you guys can choose to control with bidding and bidding is going to cost victory points. And I noticed for the two games I played specifically with three players, most of the time we didn't want to bid anything because we didn't want to lose the victory points. So we just went back and forth with the character unless it really would have made a difference, which it can. And that dummy player pretty much plays like an actual character. You get a, a whole lot of room to mess with your opponents. The fact that these star systems are always going to be different, you can choose an A or a B side which changes the amount of nebulas and different things that you'll find on the board and how you're going to move. The wormholes that let you not have to just go through the middle of the map to get to your opponents but can cross through is really cool and the fact that choosing to go to war can block certain things from happening. If somebody's trying to wormhole directly to you and you think they're going to start combat with you, you can declare at war, block that wormhole and stop them from getting to you. As well as going through, going to war with uh, in certain other ways will prevent enemies from doing certain things that they are attempting to plan ahead for. It's really do you have a lot of trust or faith. The fleets are unique. I haven't seen that played uh, where you actually don't know how many fleets, uh, how many ships are in a fleet and what sh fleet that is, except for the movement one. And determining whether you want to go to combat or not is going to be based on memory as best as you possibly can. And if they start switching their stuff up, it might be even more complex. So you got to be careful when you want to fight, how you want to fight. You have to make sure that your spirituality or your I believe it's proportion, proportion that determines whether or not you can actually fight against a fleeing enemy, because those fleeing enemies can run away, gear up themselves with another fleet, and come at you with combat attack that you never thought they actually had. Making sure that you are being on the good side and just trying to gather as much population as possible is another good way of winning. You don't actually have to fight in the game if you don't want to, but it kind of does push you to do so depending on the storyline that you play because it'll ask you in the second era to start the realm of uh, the era of darkness to go ahead and fight and take people's things and whatnot so you do i would say you probably should do combat in this game if you actually want to win and you kind of can go back and forth depending on the round what you want to do more so that's going to grant you victory points to help you push through to get your goals and to push your population up because you can get a lot of points from doing that as well there's a lot of components, and what they said specifically is a lot of the pieces you see here are not final, obviously. You're going to have the home star, which is going to be a miniature. The ships are going to be miniatures as well, and they're going to have a quality of life upgrades, obviously. What I see here is actually very nice for a 4X game prototype, so I'm excited to see what they do with the game when it funds, and what they're going to be upgrading and cleaning up, because I see that there's a lot of potential to make this game look really nice. One thing that I'm curious about, though, too, is because there's so little room on the hexes, is when you're playing with a lot of players, how are you going to entertain a lot of pieces in the map? Is it going to just have to be a lot of fleets, or can you actually push all the single units on and like stack them up? I'm gonna I'm curious to see what it's gonna look like in, in, in that determination, because I can see fights getting pretty jam-packed, or areas on the board just being full of different fleets and, and units and the, the ships and all that. And we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I'm just 
overcomplicating, but we'll, we'll find out. I'm just, it's a concern I have. All the artwork is solid. It feels like I'm playing a 4X game. It feels like it's bigger than me and I'm working to control this, the star people and get them to traverse across the galaxy and build up. Uh, the game is rather long. And so if you don't have, I'd say two and a half to three hours to play this game, it's probably something I would make sure that you set aside the time for. Do definitely read the rules beforehand. I think this video is going to help you if you listen all the way through, but there's little bits and pieces I didn't fully mention or explain as far as the tech trees and all that goes. As for a 4X game, it's very enjoyable style space 4X game. It plays a lot like the game Civ and Endless Space. If you like those type of games, but want something on a board game, you're going to enjoy this one. If you don't like the too heavy 4X, style games that has a lot to do with uh, hidden mechanics or hidden uh, you know fleets and whether you want to be at war or not at war the aggressive combat style then maybe this game's not going to be for you anyway let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section is this a game you want to pick up why or why not are you guys 4x players and if you are is this game something that would bring interest to you to want to pick it up on kickstarter the game is currently available for you down below link in the description Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you're interested in this game, check the link below and it's on Kickstarter right now. You can go ahead and pick it up if you'd like, as well as check out some of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. And if you want, go ahead and share this or comment and let us know what you guys think. We have a ton of blogs, we have a ton of reviews, we have a ton of other cool stuff on the website as well as giveaways for Callie's Corner. It's up for the last next couple days here if you want to pick that ga those games up. I think it's like a bundle of four different family games you can play with your family. Really easy to enter by sharing out her videos. She does some great work. And we also expect you guys to be on our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We'll be playing games just like this one. And in fact, we will be playing this game live. And you're going to go ahead and check it out live and see if it's something that you'd be interested in playing. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to colonizing the galaxy with my star people with you next time. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Galactic Era by CJ Games. It's designed by Channing Tatum. It plays two to six with a solo... Channing Jones. Channing, Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. Isn't that like a... Like a movie star or something? Shoot. Channing Jones. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Galactic Area. Galactic Area. Galactic Era. Galactic Era.